Hello and welcome to the show. Remember that well-known phrase, home is where the heart is. That's right, Dion, it certainly is. And that's true whether it's a sleek city apartment or a characterful country cottage. Yes, you could find that special pad down at your local property auction. There is no doubt of the adrenaline rush when the hammer falls at auction. It's hard to beat. Yeah, the auction atmosphere can be electric, full of excitement and anticipation. So who bought what at today's auctions? Let's find out. I'm in Ayrshire, Scotland, where there's a roof with a view. Ceiling's completely gone. Tommy's in Norwich, and it looks like it's access no areas. That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> and in Liverpool, first impressions are not great for Dion. Uh, there's a problem here already. All these properties have been sold at auction, and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. And gone. Today, I'm 25 miles southwest of Glasgow in the small northern Ayrshire town of Dalry, perfect for the commuter who still wants to have that quiet hometown feel. We're off to a good start because this is a desirable area and it's within walking distance to Dalry town centre and the train station. And I do like this road. It's wide, relatively quiet, some pretty houses scattered around. Now, the property we're here to see is a one-bed flat in this rather attractive stone building. It's got two doors. I can't get in this one. Looks like I can get in that one. Oh, it came with a guide price of £25,000. Up here, you've got a shared entrance, or as they call it in Scotland, a close or a closey. Let's see what we've got. It's worth remembering with shared access comes shared responsibilities and maintenance costs. So that needs to be factored in by any potential buyer. Well... I like that you have a hallway where you can see what you do have here. All the doors are leading off it. First up, you've got a cupboard, which is always good for storage in a small-ish property. Now, straight ahead, oh, the bathroom or shower room, it's not good at all, really not good. The ceiling has come down. It looks like there could have been a problem from above with water coming down. So the ceiling's completely gone um, and there's plaster work everywhere. Now, interestingly, that second front door, which is redundant, you have a hall opposite, then you have this big, substantial wall which separates it from this reception room. So could you think about taking down this wall to give yourself more space, given the space over there is redundant? You could, but because this is so substantial, you'd have to consult a structural engineer. It would really eat into a budget. You might be better thinking about reinstating the front door so it does work. It could cost less and everybody likes to have their own front door. As for the reception room itself, things are very dated. So you have your textured wallpaper, textured ceiling, but somebody's made a bit of a start for you, tried to rip down some of the wallpaper. The double glazing looks relatively new. There are little bits of black mold dotted around the place that could just be the fact that nobody's lived here for a while. But what you do have is a house that feels really solid. Through to, well, it's a kitchen diner. So what I assumed, possibly because it was at the front of the house, was the reception room, must actually be the bedroom. Because there are effectively only two main rooms in this property. This is your kitchen diner. Yes, you need to get a new kitchen in. And what a transformation it would be if you just got a brand new spanking kitchen. It could transform the place. Amazing. 
But I do like the layout. This little mini island kind of separates that side of the room from this side of the room. You could be clever with your spacing here. You've got plenty of room for a dining table or you might want to keep it snug, have a TV and your sofas. Then towards the back of the house, well, you have a backyard but you don't have any access to it at the back of your house. What you do have is a nice wee, call it what you want, a utility area, a pantry. You could put your washing machine. You could have a cupboard for herbs if you so wanted. I'd love to see this opened up. Of course, it would be so desirable to have patio doors or French doors leading out into your garden, but it would come at a cost. And would it be worthwhile? You'd have to factor in whether the money you would pay to do that could ever be balanced out with the ceiling prices in the area, how much you could hope to recoup. So something to bear in mind. From the outside, this is a very pretty stone-built tenement. But inside, what it really is, is an opportunity to start again. A clean slate to put forward your personality. I'm happy to say these old buildings were built to last, but there's clearly been flooding in this one at some point. Whoever buys it needs to make sure whatever caused this has been dealt with. Why does it always But why keep it as the original layout? I've come up with a bit of a plan. Now, when I first came in, I thought the front of the house was the reception room. It feels like a reception room with that lovely cornicing. And for me, a bedroom is normally towards the back of the house where it's a bit quieter off the road. So you could think about doing that, changing things around if you so wanted. That would mean installing a kitchen from scratch in that front room to have as your kitchen diner, because effectively you only have the two main rooms to play with. But the plus of the way things are just now is that you're looking onto your backyard from the kitchen. The kitchen's already in situ, saving you money. It's one to think about. It really is down to the buyer. But I love the fact there are options. Time to consult a local estate agent to get her opinion on this one-bed tenement, which had a guide price of £25,000. My general thoughts on this property are that it needs some money spent, it needs renovated throughout with maybe a new kitchen, new shower room, each room needs decorated and finished, windows should be looked at and I notice that there isn't a boiler so again the, the gas central heating should also be looked at. What sort of yield could you expect on the rental market once it was finished to a high standard? I think on completion this property would rent for a figure in the region of £400 per calendar month. And considering the guide price of only £25,000, once brought up to spec, what sort of sales price could be achieved? Resale of this property done to a high standard would resale for in the region of £35,000 to £40,000. What could be more Scottish on a blustery day with the whispering leaves in the air and this gorgeous old-fashioned tenement? I love it. The inside as it stands, not so much. You've got a few issues to contend with. You need to find out if there's a problem with water that's been coming from upstairs. There's lots of debris in the form of plaster work, but this has so much potential if you give it a cosmetic upgrade and some love. You could fulfill that potential. Let's find out who agreed when it went to auction. This property was on offer at a remote auction with bids taking place online. Two, three, and go online. The flat didn't actually sell during the auction, but making a successful offer of £21,500 afterwards was Alison. Alison is a local B&B owner who knows a few things about renovating properties already. I met up with her to find out more. Alison, pleased to meet you. Hi, pleased to meet yourself. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> is this for you? How do you do flats up? Where does this fit in? Well, we kind of have done flats up in the past and I was getting, should I say, a bit bored because everything, the hotel, uh, the bed and breakfast is all up to date now. There's no challenge there, it's up, it's ready. And this was like another challenge, just keeps me going. Do you know what you want to do with it? Well, 
Obviously, it has to be brought up to standard straight away. It needs plumbed, rewired, plastered, the dampness sorted out. So that will be the first step. And then either my son will move into it, we'll rent it or we'll just resale it. In the bathroom, you've got the ceiling has come down. It yeah. looks like you might have had water from upstairs. Yes. Have you looked into that? Yeah, the chap upstairs said that there was a flood at some point, but I believe this place has lain empty for a good number of years. It's not been recent, so it's been lying like this for quite some time. And you have two front doors, which is interesting. Yes. One leading on to your close, or close as they say in Scotland, mm -hmm. which is just your common mm -hmm. entrance. Yeah. yeah in a tenement. Um, are you going to leave it as it is, so one door is redundant? Not 100% decided yet, because there is obviously the front door there, so whether to block off close door and take a door out for the bedroom into the garden, and so that we've got a front door and a back door. The kitchen will be along the far wall, that door's been blocked off and coming in from the front hall. Okay. And that'll be the kitchen right along there, and this will be the living room. And then the, the back will be the bedroom, just a bedroom with, you know, like a cupboard. She's certainly going to be putting her stamp on it. Going from one to two front doors means there's no wasted space. The front room will become a self-contained kitchen, diner come living area, and the back room will be turned into the bedroom so it's away from the street. Alison will also have a back door fitted so the shared garden can easily be enjoyed. But what sort of budget are we talking about to achieve all of this? We've got a budget of about 10,000 for it. 10,000? Yeah. And you're going to keep the cost right down yeah. by doing it yourself, yeah. which you've done before. Yeah. Though 10,000, there's a lot of work to do there, given you've got the water damage. Yeah. That, you know, there's a lot of the ceilings mm -hmm. need replaced and everything yeah. redone. But you seem confident. Yeah. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, as I say, we have tackled a lot worse than this. I love her confidence. What sort of time scale is she aiming for? We're looking to probably about six months just to be in the safe side. Mm -hmm. Hopefully before that, yeah. you know, because um, everybody's ready just to move. The joiner, who's a friend, he's coming in like on next Monday, so everything will move pretty quick. So you hope to do it for 10,000 or less in six months or less? Yes, if I anyone, definitely do. <laughs> if anyone can do it, Alison, I think it's you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get there. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Alison has a lot of experience when it comes to property renovation, and I love the fact she's also got a lot of ambition. This is a one-bed flat, but she's got so many plans here. She's going to rewire, replaster, replumb, and she's certainly going to be reconfiguring the layout quite a lot. But will she be rejoicing when we see the finished product? And what is she going to do here? Is she going to sell it on, rent it out? give it to her son. Maybe it's time for you to replenish your cup of tea and you can find out how she gets on later in the show. This is Norwich Castle, whose construction was ordered by William the Conqueror following his successful invasion in 1066. Originally a Mott and Bailey construction, it's been restyled and added to many times over the centuries and has served as a fortress, a jail, and since the late 19th century, a museum and art gallery. I wonder if the property Tommy is here to see today will be an old relic or a work of art. I'm less than a mile from the city centre, but I'm right on this busy junction, so I ain't going to be the quietest place in the world. And the property I'm here to see is an ex-office that's been given planning permission to be converted into two flats, and it has a guide price of 150 to 170,000 pounds. So, will it be two for the price of one, or will it be double the trouble? Let's take a look inside. That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> now, this was a former garage, and it must have been for a very narrow car, because I can touch <laughs> on either side. But according to the planning, this is going to be proposed as a new kitchen, so they're going to convert it from a garage into a kitchen. Now, this is the main space of the ground floor flat. <laughs> this is going to be the front door, 
This stud work is going to come down and just put a doorway here. So that all becomes the living room and exit and entrance is via this door. So that's going to be the living space. Now this is going to be a large bedroom and that's going to be the ensuite for this bedroom. Then this is going to be the second bedroom and that space in there is going to be the ensuite for this bedroom. So effectively what you're going to have here is two ensuites, two bedrooms, a living room and a converted garage into a luxury kitchen. Now I hope you've got a good imagination because you can't see any of that here at the moment. But trust me, I think when this is finished, it's going to look very, very different. One thing missing from this two-bedroom layout is a communal bathroom. It's entirely down to personal taste, but it might be off-putting to some potential buyers. The upstairs one-bedroom flat is accessed through its own front door. Will there be a separate bathroom here? Looking at the size of this room and the fact that there's a toilet pan in there, that's the new bathroom. And according to the plans, this is the bedroom. But the sockets, someone's wired this up as if this is a kitchen. So that'll have to be sorted out because the kitchen stroke diner stroke living room is this big room, the biggest room in the lot, which makes sense. And this is the bedroom. And there should be a door here where those two double sockets are that takes you onto the landing. So you don't have to come through the bedroom to get into the living room. <clears throat> and listening to the sound from outside, it's rather muffled. So there's double glazed windows in here, but that one hasn't been changed. That's a single glazed window, so that needs to be done. And then redo the wiring and the plumbing, and then the flooring can go down, because it's a bit risky to have the flooring exposed like this. But the plaster work, it's all nice and smooth. That's been done to a good finish. Really nice, actually. When this is done, I think this would be a very nice flat. Well, the template is set for someone to come in and finish the job. But what will an expert from the auction house that sold the property make of this two-flat auction lot guided at 150 to 170,000 pounds? My first impressions were, hmm, wow, what a shell. This was originally a print shop some years ago, and it's been gutted and it's now literally a shell. So there's a lot of work to do inside here, but that does give you the opportunity for the new buyer to start with a blank canvas and to think about what he or she might want to do with it. And once the two flats are finished, what could they be worth on the rental and resale market? I think once renovated, a one-bedroom flat upstairs would be around about £120,000. The two-bed flat here on the ground floor, I'd put around about the £150,000. Looking for rental opportunity, then I think the one-bedroom flat would come in at around about £495 per calendar month. For the two-bed ground floor flat, probably around 580 to 600 pounds per calendar month. Well, there's plenty of work still to do here, but with planning permission already in place for two flats and all the stripping out already done, I think this could be a great project for someone. Let's find out who agreed when it went under the hammer. This lot was part of a remote auction with bids taking place online. And final time. Congratulations. It was bought by Peter for £186,000. Peter runs his own insurance company but develops properties as a sideline. He's been on the show before, purchasing this terraced house in 2019. Will he stick to the plan here or has he something else up his sleeve? Welcome back, Pisa, because you've been on the show before. I have, yes. In Lowestoft, was it? It was, yeah. It was a den terrace with the loft converted bedrooms, so four bedrooms. That's right, I remember. Yeah. How did it go? Yeah, really well. Yeah, it turned out really well. We've got tenants in there already, so it's all good. Oh, fantastic. And what made you buy this one? <laughs> I thought I'd get to the next stage of uh, development. So the other one was a reasonably blank canvas, quite easy. This one's now. A little bit more of a challenge. Yes, because one of the challenges here is the fact that you're taking over somebody who started the conversion already. That's right, yeah. So Although that was part of the attraction because someone's 
done part of the work, so I've not started from complete scratch, so I'm, I can jump in halfway through. Yeah, but the only thing about that is you've got to make sure that checking over what they've done, that they've done everything right. Absolutely, yeah. Looking at the flat upstairs, it's nicely proportioned for a one-bedroom flat. Uh, I think it's going to look really nice, and I think down here is going to be a bit of a tougher challenge, but, of course, this is going to be quite a sizeable property when it's finished. Yeah, it should be really nice, yeah. I think and the way it's laid out should be really nice. It lends itself to having, the, you know, where the kitchen would be and, uh, and you know, the, the lounge and the bedrooms. Yeah, it should be really nice. So, Pete, are you intending to stick to the drawings, the layout that's been approved, uh, or are you going to make any changes to it? I'll make some slight changes in terms of um, where you walk in on the downstairs flat will be into an open-plan uh, living area and then into the bedrooms. That makes than, use of the space yeah, better, yeah. rather than the corridor. And then upstairs, I'll move the doorways to the, to the actual hallway entrance. Where it's supposed to be? Absolutely, yeah. Right, so really you're just remedying mistakes that were made? Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is a bit of a noisy junction out here, though, I've got to say that. And that's a plate glass window. You got plans to change all that? All the windows down here will get changed. Yeah. And then the double glazed units will stay upstairs, just change the two ones that aren't double glazed upstairs. Right, yeah, and that'll probably seal up the worst of the noise completely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, Pete, if you don't mind, would you give me the order of the works you're going to do, like in a menu form? Yeah, and we start with the upstairs flat because that needs least doing to it. It's the bathroom, um, sorting out the wiring and moving the wiring, changing the windows that need changing upstairs, and then moving the doorway, plumbing the water and, and plumbing into the upstairs. And then downstairs, moving the stud walls, putting the en suites in, um, new windows throughout, new front doors, um, the plumbing, the electrics, and fitting the kitchen and the, and the bathrooms. Oh, and the whole lot, really, for a proper major refurb. Absolutely, yes. Looking at the, the place upstairs, the flat upstairs, it looks like someone's made a mistake with the wiring and the yeah. fitting of the electrics. They've put the kitchen electrics in the bedroom, by the look of it. It's it right? yeah, yeah, and that's something that's going to get rectified and, and put get rectified. In, the, in the bigger space, which would make more, lends itself more to the kitchen and living area rather than the bedroom being the, the biggest area. Are you going to get them up and running together or one no, at a time? No, the plan, because upstairs is, is further advanced, the, the, the plan is to get that one finished first, which we hope to get done within two months. So it could be earning you some money? Absolutely, yeah, and then this one we, we think four to five months will, will be done. But won't, won't that disturb your new tenants when you're bashing everything about around? Uh, hopefully not too much. <laughs> I hope more the soundproofing. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good investment to soundproof up there, mm -hmm. no? Absolutely, Even yeah. Even in the long term. Yeah, yeah. And this for rental or for flipping and selling? This will be for rental. I hope to get, yeah, tenants in it within four to five months, hopefully. Yeah, well, it's in a good location for rental mm. because you're only... You're less than a mile from the centre of town. That's right. Did you come and have a look at this before you bought it and...? I did, yes, yes. Oh, well done. Yeah, yeah. And did you read the legal pack? Uh, most of it. <laughs> most of it, the interesting bit. <laughs> yes, yes. Nothing, and luckily there weren't too many surprises in there afterwards, so I got away with it again. Oh, good. Well, well done. Yeah, you don't want to keep tempting <laughs> no, me. So what sort of budget do you think you're going to need to finish these two properties? I think about 45,000 would... Um, is How realistic. would you split that, then? 15,000 upstairs and, and um, sort of 30,000 down here. So well, that's a realistic, honest uh, guesstimate, I yes, think. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I think you've got some spare cash in there. I don't think you'll use it all, but it's good that you've got the facility to do that in case you come across, you know, a few issues. Yeah, yeah. So within six months, you'll be done and dusted? I hope so, yes. That's fully point. fitted, fully let? Yes, yes. Move it. Are you looking out for a new one, or are you going to wait to finish no, this? We'll get, uh, um, so I'll finish this one before we get, I get another one. <laughs> Otherwise, I think I've probably overstretched myself more than maybe I should have done for this one, so, <laughs> in terms of the, the work that needs doing. Because although I'll be getting tradesmen to do a lot of the work, as with the, my previous one, I'll try and do a lot of the finishing touches myself, so... Well, it's good, because you need to broaden your Absolutely. knowledge, really, yes. if you're going to carry on doing this. Absolutely. So, and you'll be able to do more and more. And there, to be quite honest, there is a certain masochistic pleasure <laughs> in taking on all the building work yourself, yeah. you know, and, and expanding your knowledge. So I look forward to seeing it and I wish you good luck. Thank you. I don't think you'll need it because I'm sure you'll be coming an old hand at it now and it'll <laughs> just fly out the door, no problem. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. So good luck. Thank you very much. Well, Pete seems as happy as Larry with his latest project. And I know there's loads of work still to do before his flats are ready for the rental market. But will it all go according to plan? 
You can find out later in the show. Coming up, Dion isn't finding the kind of water he'd like in Liverpool. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. And it's been a start again job for Peter in Norwich. Uh, a lot of things were in the wrong place, and so we had to undo all that work and start it from scratch, literally. We now return to Dalry in Ayrshire, where I visited a one-bed ground floor flat that was close to home. It's got two doors. I can't get in this one. Looks like I can get in that one. Oh, it came with a guide price of £25,000. Up here, you've got a shared entrance, or as they call it in Scotland, a close or a closey. Let's see what we've got. But any charm the place had was left at the front door. The inside was damp and, well, falling apart. Oh, the bathroom or shower room, really not good. The ceiling has come down. It looks like there could have been a problem from above. The ceiling's completely gone and there's plaster work everywhere. The buyer, who wasn't afraid of caved-in ceilings, was Alison, who bought the place for £21,500, and she was raring to give the place a good shuffle. As the kitchen will be along the far wall, that door's been blocked off and coming in from the front hall. OK. And that will be the kitchen right along there, and this will be the living room. But you seem confident? Yeah, not a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we've had, we, as I say, we have tackled a lot worse than this. Alison and her partner, Gary, had a budget of £10,000 and a timescale of around six months to turn the place around. They weren't sure whether they were going to sell, rent or have family living in the property. Well, five months have passed and it's time to see how things have turned out. A fresh lick of paint to both front doors. I wonder if that means... Fantastic. It looks like the main entrance to the flat has been reinstated. The bedroom is now a kitchen living area, as Alison has kept true to her word on the layout changes. It's been done to a wonderful spec too. The hallway has been opened up due to the layout changes and the shower room has also regained some space and a ceiling, which looks like it's here to stay. So that must mean that the old kitchen area is now the bedroom, which along with the rest of the house has been beautifully decorated and had all the damp and structural issues sorted. And that handy little utility room has gained a brand new boiler. The outside space has had a good tidy up too. And Alison is back to tell us how they managed it all. It's just a case of rip out everything. Um, we started at the beginning, took it right back to the walls. Um, five skips of rubbish went out from inside and the garden. And then we just started rebuilding it from the inside again. Alison always hoped to change the layout and she's achieved a pretty dramatic transformation, which is a far better use of the small space. This was the actual living room and kitchen in here. And we changed it for the simple reason being when you're looking out the window, you're just looking out into like a wall, a six foot wall at the back door there. Whereas where the kitchen and living room now is, you're looking out into the road and it's much brighter. The bathroom is still in the same place, but we've made it a bit bigger. And we've now coming in to the bedroom here from the cupboard in the hall. And did they manage to stick within their £10,000 budget? At the moment, we're about 8500 There's still bits and bobs to do, and we reckon that once all that's finished, it'll take us up to maybe 9200 roughly, because obviously the back door's still to get done and we still want to finish off bits and bobs in here. For such a small flat, Alison and Gary have made big changes and achieved a great deal, but it's not all been plain sailing. It's basically everything in this flat has been a challenge, from getting materials, getting the, the plasterer, um, 
it's it's just been it's been quite a nightmare this flat. It's taken a lot longer than really expected, but we're here now, and I'm just so glad it's finished. <laughs> Let's hope she's still smiling once we've had a local estate agent share their thoughts on the property. We've invited back the agent from our first visit to see what she thinks of the changes. First impressions of the property are great. I'm really amazed by the layout change that the owners have managed to make. It works really well. The high ceilings and spotlight feature, again, is impressive. All the fittings and finishings, the kitchen, the bathroom, the tiling, has been really tastefully done. What rental figures does she think the flat could achieve now? On the rental market, I think this flat could achieve a figure in the region of £400 per calendar month. And on the resale market? If I were to sell this property in the current market, I think it could achieve a figure in the region of £40,000 to £45,000. A sales figure of £45,000 would mean a pre-tax profit of over £14,000. I'm really pleased with the price. Um, due to the ceiling price in the area, I'm really pleased with it. Uh, can't complain. And the rental income of £400 per month would mean an annual yield of an eye-watering 15.5%. What does Alison think about that? Well, we're actually renting it out to families, so we're already getting 300 per calendar month and we know that everything will be all right and the flat will be looked after. So Alison and partner Gary already have plans in place to rent the flat to Gary's son, Lewis, but have the agent's valuations tempted them to explore their other options? Well, with Lewis being family, we're glad that it's somebody that's moving in. That we know, and we know he's no, not going to make a mess of the flat. And so the money part didn't really come into it. Um, I did know I could get more, obviously, but I think what we're getting is quite fair um, for a family member to be paying. Is Lewis happy then with how his home-to-be has turned out? Well, Lewis has been <laughs> hounding us for about the last six weeks. He's just so excited about having his own place and moving in. We just hope that Lewis enjoys his first home and he enjoys living here and he has a great time. We are in Walton in Liverpool, situated just four miles north of the city centre, which features many notable buildings. One being the St John's Beacon, built in 1969, which is a great spot to view the city. Dion's in town, not to sightsee, but to view an auction lot. I'm about four miles away from the centre of Liverpool. Now, the property I'm here to see is on this busy main road, but it does have lots of amenities close by, which is good news. I know when you go to the supermarket, you love a two-for-one offer. So do I. I've got a two-for-one offer for you today right here. It's in one building. We have got two flats. On the ground floor, we've got a one-bed flat. And over the first floor and the second floor, we've got a two-bed flat. All went to auction with a guide price of £70,000. I look after you, don't I, hey? OK, so as soon as you come into the door, you're into the hallway. The hallway takes you to the, the other bedroom, which is on the first and second floor. Let's do the ground floor flat first, and... Uh, that doesn't look too good. Uh, there's a problem here already. Somebody's actually tried to find the source of the problem. Where's the water coming from? Have they found it? I'm not quite sure, but that, all this, will have to come off before you can actually re-skim that again. The room itself is an OK size, lovely high ceilings. The window isn't very pretty. I'd like a nicer window there if this was going to be my flat. But it's not a bad start, apart from that. OK, so I've come up one step. There's a bit of space there for a bit of storage under the stairs, but I can see more damp as well on that wall. It is quite dark in that area. And then you come into here, we've got a... We've got a shower room. I do like these high ceilings. They come from the front room there into here as well. Electric heater. But again, if you look carefully, you can see there's like a... like a line there. The damp is here, but it stops 
about here and it just contours through. You can see it all the way as well, can't you? It's absolutely everywhere. And wow, it gets worse. Look at the kitchen. I mean, look at the back wall. It's absolutely sopping wet. The whole of the kitchen is going to have to come out. You're going to have to investigate where the water is coming in right there. And the water problem right there. And the water problem in that front room as well. Water, water everywhere. But not a drop to drink. But I prefer a pint myself. I'm afraid there's no time for that, Dion. We need to head upstairs to check out the other flat, and hopefully it's in better condition. This is the start of the second flat, and there's a lovely large lounge just there with two very big double glazed windows letting loads of light in. The high ceilings continue up here as well. Here are the stairs going up to the top of the property. You've got a bit of a landing area. Then you come across the landing into the kitchen, and it's massive. I wasn't expecting the kitchen to be this big. And looking at the cupboards and the surface space, you might be able to keep this, give it a clean down, give it a rub down, bit of a treat, get the drawers back in, some white goods, and this would be able to stay as is. No central heating uh, up here either. There's your family bathroom. Possibly need to maybe take that out and put something new in or give it a clean and uh, you might be able to keep it. That is your choice. But this is a really nice space. Dining table there, you've got your bathroom, you've got your kitchen diner, and you've got your lounge. And that's only on the first floor. I haven't touched the top floor yet. Okay, I'm up on the second floor. I'm blown a little bit, so give us, a, give us two seconds. One, <sighs> two. Right, here we go. Two beds. First bedroom is at the front of the property. You know, you've got two large windows, double glazed, in good condition. The whole of that room looks pretty much ready to go. Large, high ceilings, everything is good. Then you come down this kind of, it's kind of dark, this hallway here. It needs some spots just to brighten this area up. And then you're around the corner into the second bedroom. And again, this is the same as the first bedroom. It's in good condition. It's got high ceilings. No central heating, unfortunately, but you have got a good dual glazed window. Large bedrooms. I wasn't expecting them to be this size. No size of damp, which is always good news. Yes, the top of the building, these two bedrooms are definitely the stars of the show. Well, let's see if a local property expert will be awarding this lot with any gold stars. We've invited along an estate agent to see what he thinks of the place. Now, why do you want to go and put stars in their eyes? Why do you want to go and put stars in their eyes? So why do you want to go and put stars in their eyes? The ground floor flat needs some refurbishment. It certainly needs a new kitchen, it needs new windows new decor and flooring. The main issue, particularly in the lounge area, is the damp, and that needs addressing. So what does he think of the ground floor layout? The configuration could do with changing. At the moment, you walk from the street into the hallway and then into the bedroom area. I believe there's an opportunity to change the configuration so that the, the entrance is straight into the living area. And what about the first floor flat? The first floor flat is in a good condition. It's almost ready for someone to move into. Maybe a small bit of work on the kitchen in terms of a couple of the units, a new bath panel in the bathroom, and apart from that, it's ready to go. So what rental and sales figures would he place on the one-bed ground floor flat? For the ground floor flat, I would envisage a letting price of £450 per candidate a month. And from a sales perspective, I would recommend an asking price of £55,000. And for the upper two-bed flat? For the first floor flat, I would envisage an asking price from the letting perspective of £575 per candidate a month. And from the sales perspective, I would envisage an asking price of £75,000. So as two-for-one offers go, it's not bad at all. Now, I know the downstairs flat needs a lot of work doing to it, and it will eat into your budget. But the upstairs flat over the first floor and the second floor is almost there. And you know what? There's no sign of damp. That's got to be a bonus. Let's find out who wanted to take this place on when it went under the hammer. This lot was part of a remote auction with bids taking place online. 
sold to you, sir. And sweeping up the lot for £85,000 was father of three and property whiz Tom. He's hoping that this purchase is going to be twice the success story rather than double the trouble. Tom, nice to meet you. Great to meet you, dear. I think you've got yourself a really good project to be getting on with. But downstairs is incredibly wet. <laughs> it is indeed, yeah. <laughs> did you view the property? I did, yeah. And what were the thoughts then when you came in? In this flat in particular, obviously, there's a damp issue um, around the whole flat, uh, which needs to be looked at. Um, but the upstairs flat was very good. Um, so that's kind of what led me to uh, go for it. Are you looking to live in it or rent it or sell no, it? No, no, no. I will rent it out once it's fully complete. OK. Yeah. What did you pay for it? I paid 85000 for it. I actually um, done a pre-auction offer for this property, but it wasn't accepted. So I thought it was going to go in over £100,000 in terms of the sale. Okay. But luckily, I got it for eighty five. So What was your ceiling? My ceiling was eighty five. Was it really? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you got it bang on the money. Then. Yeah, bang on the money. I probably would have pushed it another one or two thousand, but yeah, yeah, bang on the money. Just to get hold of it. Yeah. Tom managed to get the property for his ceiling price, but downstairs in the ground floor flat, it's looking like the ceiling is the only thing that will be staying put. Tom plans to completely rejig the layout to create an open plan kitchen diner in the back by swapping around the kitchen and bathroom and by moving the bedroom to the front. As upstairs is in such great shape, it'll only be getting a lick of paint and some light repairs. He's hoping to keep the spending to a maximum of £20,000 and do it all in 8 to 12 weeks. Do you know the area? Is it your...? I do, yeah. I mean, I've got uh, 19 units in Liverpool. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so this is this is your manner, isn't it? So to speak, <laughs> this is your area, isn't it? So to speak, it yes. It is, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I started... Um, coming into Liverpool in the back end of 2019. OK. Um, so over the last couple of years, I've uh, built a, a, a tidy portfolio. Good on you, man. Yeah. Good on you. So this is, I would imagine, this is, not, is this full time now, Tom? It is full time. It's been full time since 2019, end of 2019. Really? 19, yeah. And what was your job before? I was a store manager for a big hardware store. OK. Yeah. And you enjoy this more? Different challenge to what I used to do. I mean, I used to manage about 130 odd people. Um, here, I'm managing contractors and uh, so, yeah, different kind of challenge. But yeah, I enjoy it. I really, really enjoy it. So, I mean, I've built a good team. So, I've got a builder that I use. I've got an electrician, plumber. Uh, well, listen, you've, you've kind of covered every base. You have got your work cut out down here. Can't wait to see the transformation down here. Good luck. Thank you, Dion. Well, I think Tom has got all the experience you need to take on a property like this. He's going to rejig the whole of the ground floor, which I think is a brilliant idea after he's dealt with the damp issue. Upstairs, on the first and the second floor, there's going to be a few tweaks here and there. That's all it needs. You can find out how he gets on later in the programme. We've seen the conclusion of property number one. But how's the journey been at the other two properties? Let's find out. It's time now to head back to Norwich in Norfolk and this commercial building, which had planning permission granted to convert it into two flats. It was still a shell, but Tommy was visualising what it could become. This is going to be the front door. This stud work is going to come down and just put a doorway here, so that all becomes the living room and exit and entrance is via this door. The future upstairs flat had plans for a similar layout, which was hard to picture, but Tommy was confident it would turn out well. Now, I hope you've got a good imagination because you can't see any of that here at the moment. But trust me, I think when this is finished, it's going to look very, very different. Just imagine. Yes, and the successful bidder, Peter, thought so too. He paid £186,000 for the lot and had plenty of experience to take on the project. Rather sensibly, he knew which part of the property he was going to tackle first. 
If we start with the upstairs flat because that needs least doing to it, it's the bathroom, um, sorting out the wiring and moving the wiring, changing the windows that need changing upstairs and moving the doorway, plumbing the water and, and plumbing into the upstairs. And then downstairs, moving the stud walls, putting the en suites in, um, new windows throughout, new front doors, um, the plumbing, the electrics, and fitting the kitchen and the, and the bathrooms. Oh, and a whole lot, really, for a proper major refurb. Absolutely, yes. Peter also intended to change some elements of the plans which came with the lot and hoped to do so with a total budget of £45,000 and a timescale of six to seven months. So, has he been successful? We're back four months later to find out what he's been up to. Starting with the first floor flat, Peter has installed a new kitchen and created an open plan kitchen living space. He has also installed a brand new bathroom as well as new flooring, doors and windows. The ground floor flat, however, is yet to be finished. Although it does have new windows, stud walls, door frames, all new utilities and has also been insulated. So what other work has been carried out in the property and what else is left to do? Yeah, so uh, when we first um, found the, had the first floor flat, there was uh, the doorway in the wrong place or what we deemed to be the wrong place. So we've moved a doorway, um, plastered all the walls, new doors, obviously the new kitchen, new bathroom, all the utilities in terms of water and electricity. In terms of the ground floor flat, um, there's quite a lot more to do down here uh, in terms of plastering walls, um, fitting the heating, um, finishing the electrics off. Uh, there has to be, um, what was the garage is now going to be a kitchen, so we've got a lot of insulation to put in the floors and the walls of there. And yeah, fitting kitchens, fitting bathrooms, and general decorating once all that's done. Some conversion work had already started in the property before Peter bought it, which he thought was a bonus. But as Tommy pointed out, this can come with certain risks. Yes, yeah, so when we first got here, some of the work had been started in terms of a conversion from commercial to residential in the upstairs flat, certainly. And But what we found is uh, a lot of things were in the wrong place, and so we had to undo all that work and start it from scratch, literally, um, taking plumbing out and put it into a different room. All the wiring had to come out because the sockets for what would be the kitchen were in a different room, so moving things around and um, putting it as, as the plan should be and how we thought would work better for someone living there. Peter wanted to change up the plan slightly when he first got his hands on the property. So is this still the plan for the ground floor? There's a layout very similar to, in our ground floor flat to what was originally planned. The only thing that major change that we're going to make uh, is uh, not having two ensuite bathrooms because we thought that they would be too small. Therefore, what we're doing, going to do is knock them both into one bigger bathroom, have a Jack and Jill entrances to that to make it uh, a much more uh, serviceable area for the two bedrooms. Peter has worked hard to get the top floor flat finished, but there's still a fair bit to do on the ground floor and there have been a few surprises along the way. Yeah, in terms of challenges and unforeseen work, uh, we've had to put the um, acoustic uh, insulation in between the two floors and the suspended ceiling, uh, which I hadn't realised needed to be done with it being converted from commercial to residential. Uh, the other thing uh, that has uh, held things up a little bit is the utilities coming to the property, so they're having to split the power and the water to the two flats so they've got their independent supplies and having to work to the timescales of those third-party suppliers. Peter has had his fair share of learning curves with this property, but he did have the help of a great team of tradespeople who worked on the project with him. And he's currently within his original timescale, with the first floor flat being ready to go and hopes of the ground floor flat being finished in the next couple of months. But how has he got on with his budget? So far, I think I've spent roughly about thirty to 35000 between the two flats. We've probably got ten to 15000 at least to go, and maybe a little bit more. So when everything's finished, he shouldn't be that much over his original budget, 
which isn't bad going given that issues with the soundproofing and utilities cost him an extra £12,000, which he wasn't expecting. But will the extra spending be worth it? We've asked along a local property expert to get his thoughts and some new valuations for these flats. I think the changes that have happened, certainly upstairs, um, are very positive. I think that they've made a good attempt at trying to present this well for the rental market, I would have thought. Um, I think that's the best route. Downstairs, there's still quite a way to go. So I've, I'm looking forward to perhaps seeing that when it's finished. Upon completion, how much does the agent think the ground floor flats could fetch? I would think that the ground floor flat would sell for around about £150,000. Rental, probably £700 per calendar month. Uh, slightly lower than, than we'd expect them to be, uh, com comparable to other things that are on the market around here at this time, uh, but we'll see what the market's like once it's done. And finally, now that the first floor flat is finished, what could the potential returns be? I think this first floor flat could sell for something in the region of £135,000, rental perhaps £600 per calendar month. Uh, yeah, uh, £600 a month is uh, about right. It's about what, what we're getting from the tenant who's going to be moving in soon, so that's about right. Those valuations for both flats would give Peter a combined yield of around 6.6% or a pre-tax profit of around £49,000. But he's certain he'll be renting the flats out. You never know, we may be back to see the ground floor flat once it's finished. But this far on, how is Peter feeling about the project? It's been a worthwhile project. Uh, it's a bit more advanced than things that I've done before, so it's uh, been a really good thing to be involved with. And, uh, yeah, a good process and a good, enjoyable. Back to Walton in Liverpool now, where Dion saw two flats within one terrace building. It had a guide price of £70,000, and while the upstairs flat was in relatively decent condition, Downstairs was a far damper affair. There's a problem here already. Somebody's actually tried to find the source of the problem. Where's the water coming from? Have they found it? I'm not quite sure, but that, all this, will have to come off. And it didn't stop there. Wow, it gets worse. Look at the kitchen. I mean, look at the back wall. It's absolutely sopping wet. The whole of the kitchen is going to have to come out. Water, water everywhere. But not a drop to drink. But I prefer a pint myself. It was Tom who bought the place for £85,000. And although it had its problems, he could see its potential. Obviously, there's a damp issue. Um, around the whole flat, uh, which needs to be looked at. Um, but the upstairs flat was very good, um, so that's kind of what led me to uh, go for it. Armed with a maximum budget of £20,000 and a timescale of 8 to 12 weeks, this experienced developer was confident he could turn this around for the rental market. Four months later, we're back. The downstairs toilet and lounge are now a modern and fresh kitchen. The small damp kitchen is now a beautiful toilet and shower room. Most of the work has been done to the ground floor flat after a damp proof course was applied. And upstairs has had a lick of paint and a tidy up.
gas central heating, uh, it wasn't part of the budget that I budgeted for. We had to bring the gas from the outside because the, uh, the property didn't have gas. So that took a bit of time um, and, and delayed the project slightly. So I'm most pleased with the downstairs flat uh, that we uh, refurbed um, because I think the standard of finish is really good. Although it's not high end, it's really good finish. After all the money and effort spent, what are Tom's plans for both properties now? We've actually found a tenant for the top property. The bottom flat was finished yesterday, but both property essentially will be rented out. With a clean, fresh finish throughout, who did all the work? Um, so I've got a team of builders and tradesmen who go into all my refurbs and then they do the refurb. With an original budget in mind of £20,000, did Tom manage to keep within it? I ended up spending just shy over £27,000. Um, so we were uh, over budget by 7,000. Um, and that's predominantly uh, because of the central heating system. A 7,000 pound overspend doesn't seem too bad in the grand scheme of things, considering the new central heating system wasn't part of the original plan. We've invited back the estate agent who saw the property first time around to give us his thoughts and updated valuations. I like the layout, um, I like the finish, the grey and the white colour scheme. Kitchen's been finished to a nice standard, the shower room's lovely as well. The landlord's really sort of no expense spared. The selling point for the ground floor flat is the fact that it's completely new throughout. Not moving to anyone else's mess. It's a brand new kitchen, brand new shower room and a really nice finish. The selling point for the upstairs flat is it's a really good size. It's got two double bedrooms, so it suits sharers. It suits a couple maybe that are looking to work from home as well. Uh, again, the finish is really good. It's got a brand new bathroom, the original kitchen, but with still a good standard anyway, um, and a really good colour scheme. Tom has spent a total of just over £112,000, but how much value has he added to his investment? The upstairs flat would sell for £85,000. I believe the ground floor flat would sell for £65,000. I think those values are great, to be fair. Um, so that's 150000 I think, both flats. So, um, yeah, you know, more than happy with the values. That total figure of £150,000 could give Tom a pre-tax profit of £38,000. But will renting the properties be just as lucrative? Ground floor flat would rent for £495 per calendar month. The upstairs flat would rent for £575 per calendar month. Yeah, I think my estimation for the downstairs flat is between 495 and 525 I would expect to get 525 because it's brand new uh, flat. Um, so I think it would rent at 525 But 495 isn't bad either. Uh, so would be happy with obviously 525 but 495 is uh, good. Both flats could bring a total of £1,070 per calendar month, giving Tom an impressive 11% yield. Is he ready for a break now that this is finished? During the refurb of this is I took my family uh, for uh, a little bit of time out for 13 days. We went to Bangladesh, so we haven't gone abroad for quite a number of years. Um, so, um, apart from doing properties, there's no other plans as such because we've already done that. Um, so maybe next year we'll, we'll, we'll look at maybe going abroad again. I love it when an auction property buy comes together and ends in a positive result. Yes, but that's not always the case because nothing is guaranteed. So join us next time for more ups and downs, highs and lows here on Homes Under the Hammer. Goodbye. Bye-bye.